This video is going to look at some of the reasons why you need to have Fluent Forms in your arsenal of plugins if you're providing a professional web service to clients or if you want something that goes beyond the basics within your organization. So the, one of the, the important parts of that would be support. So who is building this plugin? Is it a good team? Is it a big team? And are there constant updates? Within the interface in the Fluent Forms Pro, you have uh, an option to report a bug and you can also get some expert advice from a support team. The, also the user guide access. So everything that you need is in one place and if you really like what you see, you can then go and write a review on the plugin. A very professional team, a big team, always get back to you with support and always finding time to create and publish new features to the plugin. What's really nice is it's very progressive. And if you have a look at the roadmap to date and the features that are available, you'll see that you get a whole lot more than you will get from some of the other premium plugins. There is a free version as well, but for demonstration purposes and to show you what's really possible, we're going to have a look at what's available in the pro version. If we then look at the modules that are available, so these are integrations with third party plugins and other uh, marketing processes. So if we have a look here, we have Active Campaign, Campaign Monitor, Constant Contact, Convert Kit, Get Response, HubSpot, Eye Contact, Moose End, Platform, Platformly, Webhooks, Zapier, Sendfox, Mailer, Twilio, Gist. MailChimp, Slack, and then also Google Sheets. What's really nice about that integration is that when the form is saved, it'll save the form to a sheet. The same form can save information to more than one sheet, and you can segment that out by using a condition so that people who choose option A, their details get saved to Google Sheet A, option B to Sheet B, option C to Sheet C. So that means that if you have a form that has support sales or marketing implications the same form can be used and based on that selection you can save that information to three different sheets and the people responsible to take that information further can then do whatever they need to do from the google sheet or integrate from the google sheet into another service so that's what makes the modules really nice and they've also been designed to make integration really easy a lot of the heavy lifting has been taken out of the process. So you can get up and running and integrated within a couple of clicks. We move on then to settings. In the settings, just to give you an idea, these are some global settings that you have for all forms. A lot of this information can be changed on a per form basis. Here we're looking at label placements, help message placement, error message placement, some basic presets that you can do but once again these can all be overridden on the form under miscellaneous we can disable IP logging form analytics email footer text you can add email footer text so every email that gets sent has a specific message uh, we have the honeypot security which is great it's standard part of the plugin built-in uh, classic editor button which don't really go for Enable no conflict mode. If you do pick up a JavaScript uh, conflict, they do have um, the no conflict mode available. You can activate and hopefully that will sort out any conflicts with other plugins should they arise. And auto tab index, which means that as you create the form, you can tab from one field to the other. You can also then allow permissions to specific people for being able to edit forms. So these are just some basic global settings. We're not even, we haven't even touched the deeper integration per form. Here we're looking at a, um, a recapture setting, once again, part of the plugin. And in this case, we've activated Google Sheets, and this is where we can either disconnect from Google Sheets or connect to Google Sheets. Whatever module we've connected to will appear here in the settings, so very easy to go in and adjust whatever settings are required. When it comes to form submission, 
It's really nice. There are, are different ways to access this information. This is one of the ways. If we have a look at what's available, we can choose a form. So we have a demo form here with some information. We select that form. We can now see the entries per user and we can see the date that it was submitted on. And if we want to have a look at that form, so let's have a look there. We can click on that eyeglass, that eye, and we can have a look and see the information about that form. We've got the name, the fields that were filled in, but then we also have some submission logs. And this one says that it was successfully added in Google Sheet contact form. That's as a result of the Google Sheet introduction. And here is some email notification broadcast to, and who would have received the notification for that email. So pretty nice information that you can have on every single submission in your inbox or from that form. But what's also nice is that we can also look at the details in a different, in a different way. So if we go back to entries, we also have this view visual report. What's nice here is that any information that's submitted with a select field, be that a, a radio field, a select field, a select box, we get a graphical presentation of that information. So here we can see that in the submission submitted, we have uh, two choice three, two choice two, one choice one, uh, two choice one, and one choice four. So we're looking at the percentage then as a total of the submissions and over here we have some other information such as total entries, entries by browser, entries by device. Nice overview and this of course can be printed maybe to a PDF as a report which is really nice if you need to present that to somebody and also we can then reset the form analytics if you want to draw a line in the sand and start again with a new sub without having to create a new form. So really nice overview information of the form. We now get to uh, some of the nitty gritty when it comes to the form. So we're now in the back end of a form and before going to the editor, let's have a look at some of the settings and integrations within the form. So this is standard for any form that you create. The first thing we have here under form settings is confirmation settings. So when the form is submitted, you can submit, uh, you can redirect or leave it on the same page. We can redirect to a page or we can redirect to a custom URL. If you stay on the same form, there'll be a message that appears thanking you for the form submission. So your customer immediately after submitting the form that are assured that the form has been submitted and they don't submit it multiple times. After submission, you can either hide the form to display the message or you can reset the form. Up to you. The form layout, we have label alignment. So here, once again, we can change those uh, global settings, top, left, right, help message position, and really nice, just tick, tick, tick where you would like the standard uh, fields and messages to appear. Even on the asterisk position for compulsory fields, you can decide left, right, or maybe you don't want them to display at all because there's no need to. Under scheduling and restrictions, we have maximum number of entries. If you have a competition, you might want to restrict the number of entries. Quite easy to come in here and select and say how many uh, maximum number of entries per day, per week, per month, per year, or in total. We have form scheduling, so select the date from date to date. If you're having a competition, maybe you only want the submissions to run for a specific time. Very easy to come in and set those dates and the message that will appear prior or after the dates. We have a login requirement setting, so maybe you would like somebody to be logged in in order to, com to, to complete the form. Um, and then we also have empty submission blocking. So that will help to cut down on any bots that are out there just submitting forms with no information in them. We have a look at uh, the survey result. So if you have a, a, a survey that you're running using Fluent Forms, 
you can then use this to show the labels when displaying the results of the survey. So this is where you can um, create those settings. And then we also have compliance settings. You might want to delete entry data after the form submission so that there are no form, there's no form data collected in the back end of your website, which then also assures users that information submitted is deleted and you're not keeping any of that information. It also means that if anybody gets access to the back end of your website, they're not going to have access to any of those customer details. You can also then add an extra CSS class, but this is not the only place where you can change the look and feel of the website. So those are just some of the, the settings available under form settings. There are other notifications as well. So we have email notifications. You can have as many email notifications as you want. And when you look at the email notifications, you can either create a notification to go back to the person submitting the data, or maybe you want to create a notification in the company. You can then also use conditional fields to determine who would get the, the notification of that email. And that conditional field can also be determined then by what the user has selected within the field, within the form in different fields. Everything is customizable, so the send to email, it's customizable. You can even, um, you can enter an email, you can select a field from a form, or you can send it to the WordPress admin, standard admin email address. If we have a look here at the subject, new form submission, input name, input radio, you don't have to remember any of those fields, because when we click here, it pulls in the fields that are available from the form as well as additional information like the date, post ID, IP address, site title, Im embedded URL, a couple of other fields that you might want to use uh, to give an idea of where that form has come from. If we have a look at the email body, once again, all data will be a summary of the data from the field. This form submitted at and the URL of the field, the URL of the, of the form on the page that it was submitted from. Under advanced, this is where we can decide the from name for the field, the from email address, the reply to email, BCC fields, CC fields, and then over here under conditional logic, we can decide if it's going to be any of the following or if all of the following have to be true. So if you have one select field that we have in this case, it can be if the selection is either choice one or choice two. If we had multiple, it could have been all, which means that if they chose from make selection, they chose choice one, and from made selection two, they chose choice number three, then this form would go to a specific person. So there's a lot of customizing that you can do within this form to make sure that the right person has access to the form. So as, as detailed and as complex as you want, or as simple and as straightforward as you want it to be. So it helps you to look at forms in a different way because you can really start harnessing the power behind what's possible, especially in a larger company. There are also other confirmations. These are, the confirmation is what the user sees on the screen after making their submission. In this case, once again, after making their submission, you can do same page to a different page to a custom URL. In this case, what we've said is, dear user first name, thank you for your message. We'll get back in touch with you shortly regarding, and that's based on their input. To access the fields in your form, once again, very easy, add short code. Then we have general short codes, which adds other information, and then we have entry attributes. So there's a whole lot that you can that you have access to 
when it comes to the notification, the confirmation on the screen. What's really nice about personalizing it is the person sees um, that you care and that the form has been submitted. After submission, once again, you can hide the form or reset the form. And there's also conditional logic available. So if you remember under form settings, you have a similar option, which is the generic for any form that's submitted. This now becomes more personalized. So if you've selected the conditional logic, it will override whatever the, the standard response was in these form settings. So if choice one or choice two is selected, this is the message that will appear on, on the form. If choice, you can then create another notification and say that if choice three or choice four is chosen, display something else. So that might be if the form has got to go to support or to accounts or to marketing or to sales. Instead of saying we'll get in touch with you shortly, you could say sales will be in touch. A service representative will contact you shortly um, or somebody from marketing will be in touch. So a very nice way of taking a simple form and giving people feedback in line with what the inquiry was. If you, if you want to, oops, wrong button. If you want to create additional styling, you there is a custom CSS option, and also there's some custom JavaScript for custom JavaScript functionality. Not really necessary on the custom CSS as styling is built into the plugin, and we'll have a look at that. Of course, when it comes to custom JavaScript, you can add that as required. Under marketing and CRM integrations, in this case, we have connected to a Google Sheet. So that is what you um, see over here. So you'll see that the same form, option four goes to a form and different option will go to another form. But here we can see the integrations, and if we want to change anything into the, in the integrations, we can select the option, and this is where we can then set the options to connect to a specific form. Uh, that would be the, the, the name for our reference. That's the ID of the form in the Google the spreadsheet in Google, and this is the worksheet name within that sheet. So you might have multiple worksheets in the same spreadsheet that will then save different information from the form, but based on what the user has selected. In, in, in this case here, we choose what information we would like to appear in the sheet, what columns, in this case, we're only saving three items. However, if we have a look here, all the fields from the form are included here. So we can add those to our sheet and the title of each column is taken from here. So you can manage that process quite easily from, your, from the settings here. And there is also a conditional logic module, which then determines what information is saved to a specific sheet of a specific spreadsheet. Very easy to, to set up. Right, so that just looks at some of the functionality. And as you can see, it's much broader than just a normal form. When we then look at the editor for a form, very easy to create a form. All the fields are here on the right hand side to add a form field let's just have a look at say um, a simple text you can either drag and drop it into a specific place or by clicking it will add it as the bottom field and then from here you can drag and drop it to wherever you want it to go so once again lots of options that you have there are also advanced fields short codes, terms and conditions, action hooks, capture, section breaks, hidden fields, GDPR agreement, password field, repeat lists, uh, just so many things that you can do from here to create your form. Once you're happy with the field, you can then also 
have some input customizations. So when we select the field here, we can decide if, in, in, the, in this case, if we want to make it a required field, yes or no, a help message, maximum text length. Uh, there, there are just so many options available when it comes to each of the input fields with the input customization. You can really tailor your field to your, your fields to do and be exactly what you want them to be. When we then look at the preview and design, this is where you can customize the look and feel of your form. We have some default styles here, which are pretty basic. But if you want to get into something a little bit more interesting, you then have the advanced side of things. We also have other styling options. Here you could come in, for example, and just quickly you might want to change the background color of your form. You could come in here and make it whatever you want. Uh, let's just keep it something light. You can then decide on a form margin. You can put in your form padding. So you might make that 15 or round. You could also style it um, different padding, top, bottom, left, right. This border around the side, you might want to make it thicker. You might want to keep it. You might not want to keep it. Once you've done there, you can save those settings and you can go back to the form. And here you can style so many items. You, you, can, you can do your labels. You can come in very quickly, change the label color. You can change your placeholder text color. Now the placeholder is the text that you see before filling in anything. They will make it blue. Your typography can be changed. You can change the, the size of the text, the, the font weight. You can uppercase, lowercase, capitalize. Whatever you want to do with the typography, this is where you do it. You can also then, when we look at the text that you're, that you're inputting here, you can change the the color so let's make that green so if i've put in my last name i'll just select that and you will see now that that color is the color of that text after you filled it in so for some reason now it's not changing There we go. So as I type it in, it's changing as we need to. And if we look at the focus, I can change the background color. Now when I go in to type in the information, it changes to white. And I can see which field I'm busy typing in. So these are just some of the, the options available when it comes to styling. So you can really make a really good looking form. If you put in the email address, you'll see it changes as I type. So I know that I'm busy typing. And so these are just some of the options available to you. When it comes to the... <clears throat> The submit form button, very quick and easy. If you want to change the width, you can come in 100% and you can then change styling, padding, as required. Whatever you want to do with the styling, this is where you can do it and you don't need to use any CSS. So very quickly, you can create a form and have it look exactly the way that you want. You can save the settings and once you're done, you can then preview that form to see what it'll look like. And you can even go as far as submitting the form. Let's do that. And you'll see the functionality will come through. If I go in there now and I put in my surname and I hit submit, the form will submit. And there's that personalized message. Thank you for your message. We'll get in touch with you shortly regarding choice one.
very nice, very quick, very easy to style. So that's pretty much then how you would set up your form and to change the name of your form, this is where you can come in and type in whatever name that you want for your form or not. To insert the short code, very easy, just by clicking on the short code, it copies it to your clipboard and you can drop that in. As I said, very comprehensive set of options, but laid out in a way that makes it really easy to follow, easy to understand. A really um, good consideration, and if you're doing a lot of forms for a lot of different companies, standardizing on fluid forms is a very good idea, well worth every cent, well worth the functionality and great support. So if you're looking at a, at a, a very good option, this is the one to go for. I hope that helped. Thank you for watching.